Hey everybody, it's Randall Herrera and today we're here in Astoria Park. Uh, this is in Queens, New York and we're doing a portrait session with the Fuji X-T2. Uh, we've got the grip on it, 50 millimeter f2 lens and we've also got the new Godox uh, or Flashpoint uh, TT350. Uh, this is the first time I'm using this uh, setup um, for a portrait session. I'm, just, I'm new to Fuji, so this is my first Fuji portrait session. Um, also the first time I'm using, there's a lot of firsts going on here, there's also the first time I'm using this TT350 as a controller. I know the X1T is now available, uh, the controller. I have that controller for, for Sony, I have it for Canon. Um, and I was gonna get it for the Fuji, but seeing how this speed light can, can do the, the job as a controller, um, I think for now I'm gonna just try it out and see how it works out just the way it is. Um, we're currently waiting for our model to show up, and in the meantime we're setting up over here. Um, we're gonna be shooting with uh, the Godox um, AD360, uh, that's the TTL version, um, and uh, that's, that's about it. So in the meantime we're gonna be getting set up. So uh, stay tuned and we'll see how this performs. I just want to make sure we are set up properly. Um, let's come in a little bit uh, closer with this. Okay. Yeah, it's like fighting a... Uh... <laughs> All right, right there. All right, so this photo session did not go exactly as I had planned. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to use as much lighting as I wanted to uh, because of the wind. The wind was causing get, just causing such a problem. One, it was just it just kept getting blown over. Uh, luckily, the model showed up with a friend that was actually able to help us with some things. Um, but it was just a constant problem with that getting with the lighting getting blown blown over. Uh, the other thing was even when we had that under control or, or to a certain extent under control, the model's hair was just like all over the place. Um, because I wanted her to have the bridge and the city hold the city behind her as the background, right? Um, unfortunately, that couldn't happen um, because the wind was coming from behind her. And so it was causing all, of course, all the hair was flying forward and it just wasn't working out. Um, I've taken photos there before, I've, taken, I've had portrait sessions there before, and it really looks nice when you, when you have a nice calm wind um, or calm enough, calm enough that you can uh, use the lighting. It is just, it's really nice. Um, we went there at not exactly the most ideal time in terms of lighting. I believe it was maybe like 1.30, 2 o'clock, something like that. So the, the lighting was really harsh, uh, but again, I just didn't, anticipate that being a problem because I was going to overpower the sun with my lights. Uh, that, however, did not happen. And instead, we had to use a reflector. And of course, the problem there was, um, for me, th that I was encountering was that the lighting was coming from the side or from kind of a lower angle. And so she ended up with kind of shadows on, on, on the top of her nose instead of normally you would end up with shadows kind of like underneath and that kind of thing. That became an issue. Um, but anyways, let's go on with the video and uh, you guys may, you, you might be able to notice it in the video that uh, lighting wasn't used um, much and that, you know, how the, light, the lighting effects of the, of the reflector that we used um, weren't exactly the most flattering. I decided, let's just go on with it. We were there, we're gonna shoot, we're gonna make the best of it we can. Uh, so anyways, on with the video.
sorry, you can go ahead. I'm sorry. So there you go that was a portrait session um as you see or may have noticed um the lighting was there was some light issues with the lighting uh, again we were there we just did the best we could um but the tt350 performed well if you ask me um never misfired i never had any issues with it not working not communicating or anything like that it, it worked controlled did everything I needed to do. I didn't use it as much as I wanted to, but for the most part, I got a good idea of how it works uh, in an you know, outdoor environment in a real shoot situation. Um, so definitely works. If you're doing things like events, then maybe this is not gonna be enough because there are some features that you're not gonna get here um, that are, or, or if they're there, they're not quite as easy to use as with the X1C. Um, but for myself, I'm not in a rush to get the X1C. I will get it, most likely, just because um, it's a little bit smaller to have on the camera and, and I was having some ha issues with it on the camera. So that, so for that reason alone, I think I will end up getting it. Um, the Fuji, um, for the first portrait session, I think it worked out well. Uh, I, yeah, I'm still learning the camera. Um, so I did have a little bit of struggles. What I will say is the IAF uh, Fuji, if you could please uh, work on improving that. Um, with Sony, you can dedicate a, you can assign a button to, ha to do the IAF. So basically um, you can actually, some, some lenses have a button on, the lens, on it, on the lens body itself, and you can assign that button to do the IAF. So you basically press it and it'll, hold on the eye in continuous autofocus. So the model could be, you know, a slight movement and it'll still hold. Uh, it works best in, it works 100% in headshots. Pretty much the way I'm framed in this video, it works every time. And every time it is 100% just guaranteed to be in focus. Maybe one out of a thousand, you know, one out of every hundred or whatever, for some reason it's slightly off or whatever. Further back you get, the further, the less consistent it gets. But at the same time, if you're doing a whole body shot, you don't really need to be precisely focused on the eyeball, right? Uh, you know, as long as you're kind of focused in the general area of the face, you're good. Um, so I did, I would like to see that improved uh, because it is such a useful feature. Um, and I, I'm hoping it's something that will come in a firmware upgrade and not on the X-T3, I guess it would be. Um, but aside from that, uh, camera's easy to work with. Uh, for, for portraits, it was easy to work with. The 50 millimeter F2, um, I love these F2 lenses just because they're so small and light and you can, I can hold this all day long. Uh, the battery group adds a little weight. 
um, for a portrait session like the one I did, I don't think you really need the extra performance that the grip adds. I could be wrong, but I'm not noticing that much of a quicker autofocus, if any at all. Um, what I do like is that the three batteries are just in there, so I don't, I'm not even thinking about it. especially in a portrait session like that that's lasting, what, two hours? At most, it wasn't that particular one wasn't even two hours. It was like an hour and a few, 20 minutes, something like that. Uh, you don't have to think about, you're not even, I'm not even thinking about power levels, to be honest. I'm just shooting because I know I've got three batteries in here and it's going to go. But um, again, the 50 F2 was sharp, sharp lens. I'm very satisfied with it. To an F2, you're not going to get any crazy, you know, creamy, but you know, just you're not going to get that that super bokeh that you're gonna get with an f1.2 but i'm still good with the bokeh that this um lens gives out at f2 it's good um you know f1.2 is is great but me personally i don't want every portrait at f1.2 that's just me though if you're that person that wants everything, every every shot you do to have the background just me totally melted away into nothing, then yeah, maybe this isn't for you. But um, as far as its performance, the the image quality, the bokeh, the quality of the bokeh, I was totally satisfied with it. Um, definitely looking forward to doing it again. Um, I do feel the need to test, you know, do the whole thing again just because. Um, uh, you know, unfortunately, I didn't get the 100% uh, of the results I wanted. Um, also, the what the light that I'm using is the A, the Flashpoints AG, uh, what is it, 360. Um, it is a TTL version. I don't use it in TTL real, really, or, or I rarely do. Um, or at least not in portrait sessions. Um, but it's still not quite enough, uh, not, not quite enough to overpower the sun for full full body shots. Um, so um, I am struggling a little bit with, with getting the lower half of the body. You know, it's always a little bit underexposed or, um, so perhaps an Explorer, what is that? Uh, Explorer 600, I think it's called. Uh, perhaps that's in my future. Um, but anyways, overall, I think it was, it was a successful portrait session. Not quite what I was, was hoping for, not quite what I was aiming for in terms of just the whole thing. Um, but we did the best we could with the given the situation we had and That is it for this video. Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe if you like it like if you liked it and uh, Stay tuned for more because I'll have more coming. See you guys next time